Welcome back Watch Addicts. Today, a little bit of a treat for you. I'm doing my Seiko watches. Now, let's do a quick wristwatch check. I haven't got a Seiko on today. I am actually wearing my Hoya. Focus. This is the Aqua Racer Calibre 5 automatic. Lovely watch, 43 mil. So it is quite a decent size. Anyway, let's get down to my Seiko addiction. So this is a nice little treat for all the Seiko uh, Seikoholics out there. So what I'll be doing, I'll be doing a little run through of uh, my watches, specifications. And I'll be doing loom shots, so you can actually see how good the loom is on them. Now there is a price difference between the watches. I think my cheapest one I've got is um, probably that one, which I got for like I think it was about one hundred and nineteen ninety nine. From a well known jewellers all the way up to my most expensive, which will probably be one of is that one that was just over 2000 when it came out, about 2300 when it came out actually. But that's actually my most expensive. And I've got a fair few of the old style. As you can see, I've got the SKX range here. I've got a 7002, which I put at the back. And you've got the Turtle. That's a Kinetic. Titanium, my um, little Alpinist, a couple of solar, baby turtle, uh, 62 mass representation, that's the new one, uh, and you've got a couple of old ones, the good old flighty, you can't be the good old flighty, monster, and then I've got a couple of samurais here as well. I think I've got one missing somewhere. Anyway, if, if you have, I'll find it. Well, <coughs> this is my Seiko collection. So, what I'll do, I'll go through them one by one, give you all the specs on them, tell you how good they are, and hopefully you like the video so let's get this slot sorted and get down to business so let's start off with this one this is actually the first Seiko I ever bought it was back in 1996 This is, um, I'm not sure what model it is actually, to be honest. I have got the box and the paperwork for it somewhere, but I have had a good route and still can't find it. But anyway, this is a little Seiko uh, chronograph. Quartz movement. It is 100 metres water resistance. It's got a 12 hour chronograph on it. You've got your date at three o'clock you got loom on the hands and hour markers what I'm going to do, I'm going to do pull. I can actually see the loom on that now it's uh, quite bright on that so that's your loom, it has only got a hard lex crystal it has got a screw down case back not a screw down crown 
it is a 38 millimeter case you've got 10 millimeters thick 20 millimeter strap and it is 46 millimeters lug to lug so it is actually only a small watch so what I'll do just, uh, so we can just pop it on just do it like that oh, doesn't work out I do it like that as you can see it is actually only a small watch my 7 inch wrist so it is it is my first watch and I actually wore it for quite a long time my first ever what I could call a decent, half decent watch was actually a Timex um, Explorer which I had for you know, 10 years 10 or 15 years and I did have it a long time then all of a sudden I just lost it but I've managed to keep hold of this one thankfully but this is my little uh, Seiko Chrono as you can see it still works fine and it's a cracking little watch next is the Seiko Flightmaster it's the SNA411 got a quartz movement in it you got a 60 minute chronograph it's also got an alarm you got the date at the three o'clock hardlex crystal pity really this should be a sapphire crystal in the type of watch it is so you've got rotating bezel so it does rotate both ways you've got a screw down crown you got screw down pushes as well You can see so you can make the chronograph work that works nicely nice smooth action down to 60 again to 12 o'clock screw them back in which makes it 200 meters water resistant It's a very nice watch this and then you've got a 42 mil case you've got 13 millimeters thick I don't know why Seiko do like 21 millimeter straps but it's a 21 millimeter lug width and lug to lug you've got 44 mil you've got a nicely polished case bezel is nice it's very smooth it's a really nice watch good thing about this as well you don't have to worry about it lining up so it doesn't click so then you got a screw down case back as well well it's a nice watch let's check the loom because you got your loom on your hands and lower markers See, let's just get that light, turn that light off, and you can see them. So that's not too bad. They are only actually small, which is a bit of a shame. Could have done with being a little bit bigger, but you probably wouldn't have been able to fit everything on the watch. So, well, that's a really nice watch. I got this watch uh, after watching TVG on Urban Gentry. He did uh, highly recommend it and it's actually one of his favourite watches but I do like this watch it's very nice let's see what it looks like on the wrist so I'm not fastening it up but you can just get an idea of what it looks like 
so that's the watch itself on the wrist I like this strap I did get this strap uh, from a friend of mine thank you James well, lovely watch so that is the Seiko Flightmaster SNA411 next we have the Seiko SRP605 dash K2 blue monster now I have had this quite a, a while I think since it actually came out and I just loved the blue on this on the bezel on the dial with the gold accents on it you know, nice big chunky watch original strap on it if I can get it open so you've got a automatic NH36 movement 36 because you've got the day date 35 is without the dates so you've got the loom on the hands and the hour markers let's do a little give that a nice little blast with the light as you can see that doesn't half uh, pop out that does very nice and it does last uh, quite a long time that does so you've got a non screw down crown because it's automatic movement let's get it going give it a shake shake it to wake it there we go got rotating bezel but it only rotates one way unidirectional and it does line up very nicely and chapter rings inside lines up nicely as well which makes a change but like I say I do love my Seiko watches they are probably my favourite uh, watch brand well, as you can see in the background and you know it's a nice watch also as well let's just take this off there you got a nice exhibition display back on it let's just uh, pop it on the wrist it is quite a large watch but it does uh, fit nicely on the wrist and I'll pull it a bit tight like that It is uh, pretty decent. So you got a 44 mil case. You got 13 millimeters thick. You got a 22 millimeter strap, and it is 50 millimeters lug to lug. And you got a nice polished case on it. A lot of polish on this case. Well, you know. Very nice watch. So it's a Seiko 5 Sport. Like I say, it is like a dive watch, but it is only 100 meters water resistant. So you know you can you can go swimming in it, but I wouldn't recommend any type of diving or being in the water for too long. But you know, I thought this would have been at least 200 meters water resistant, but never mind. So anyway, that is the SRP605-K2. So we now have the Seiko SKS641P1. It's a quartz movement, 100 meters water resistant. It's only a 60 minute chronograph. You got your date between the four o'clock and the five o'clock. There's no loom on this watch whatsoever, so it's a waste of time doing a loom shot because there isn't any. It's a bit disappointing because I would have liked a little bit of loom on it. So you have got a screw down case back. You can tell how much I've worn it because it's still got the sticker on the back. Nice uh, polished case, polished. 
bezel, it's a fixed bezel. You have got 20 more uh, 20 more hour you know, markers on the uh, chapter ring inside. This is a uh, pretty decent looking watch. But, so we've got a 44mm case, you've got 13mm thick, 20mm strap and lug to lug is 50mm. So let's, uh, this did actually come with a metal bracelet but you know what I'm like, I don't like the metal bracelets so let's pop that on the wrist to see what it looks like. Pretty good. Nice looking watch. Well, that is. I actually bought this to take it, um, my original one's place. But I'll still end up wearing the original as well. Well, anyway, this is the SKS641 P1. Next we have my SKX collection. I'm going to do all these together. You have got four 007s and one 401, which I'll get to in a bit. But this is actually my original SKX. Now, the price on these is fluctuating all over the place. I did uh, get it brand new, like all like all my watches. I like to get brand new, and then I modif get uh, them modified if I want. But I do love the SKX. It is an icon of a watch. You know, you've got to shake it to wake it. Do the Seiko shuffle, as they say. It is a iconic watch. You've got 200 meters water resistance. You know you've got your rotating bezel. Mine does line up. You got your loom on your hands and your hour markers. Let's give this a good uh, blast. The uh, blue light. And as you can see, that is quite bright. You will see that underwater. So you've got your day date at the three o'clock, you got a screw down crown, you got a screw down case back, which you can start to see under my NATO straps. I love the NATO straps for these watches. I think it, they really do suit them better than a bracelet. I have got the uh, original bracelets from the Jubilee style ones. Anyway, so we've got a 42 mil case you got 13 millimeters thick 22 millimeter strap so it is quite a wide strap and then you got 46 mil lug to lug so this you know i'm not putting it on my wrist but it is a really decent size it's a nice size watch you know because you've got the shorter lug width so it'll fit you know the smaller wrist so that's my original non-modded SKX and then I bought another SKX, sent it to a friend of mine and he modded it for me. This is the uh, Batman one, same dimension, same movements. 7R36 I think it is, so movement in it, so you've got the Batman bezel, save the ocean dial on it, Rolex style hands, very nice watch, a little bit of a shake, shake it to wake it, Very nice. That's the uh, Batman one I had done. Then I had a 
I'll see this one done next, the Pepsi one. So, beautiful sunburst dial, blue dial on it. Different style of hands. Got the Pepsi bezel. Give it a shake. And away it goes. Does need a good good shake this one. It's not been uh, warm for quite a while actually. What I do actually need to service this one. So we'll give it a good service uh, in a day or two when I decide to mess about with all my watches. So I'll put it on the green NATO strap. Works nicely with the uh, blue and red. But that is my Pepsi one. Then we've got my vanilla one. This is the vin I call it the vanilla Coke. Because I've got the Coke bezel and the white dial. So I call it the vanilla Coke. Oh, very nice watch. I think this probably gets more wrist time than the others. I do like this watch a lot. I say, I see brand new. Well, it was brand new. <laughs> I sent it to a friend of mine to get uh, sorted. And then we come to this one. Looks exactly the same as the SKXs, the 007s. But this is actually a 401. I just want to shake. So this is a 401. This one I had modified as well. So this is the Coke one. I got the name on it, you can't really see it very well in this light. Got the loom on the dials as well. Like I say, very nice uh, watch that. So that is basically my SKX collection. I am a big fan of the SKXs. They have all been uh, pressure tested. And they're just like an iconic watch. You know, they're trying to bring other, other watches out to replace them. Okay, you know, the um, Orient Kamasu I'll say that does come on par with uh, this watch maybe passes it a little bit because it is actually hand wind as well these are not hand wind with the um, 7S, 7S 36 movements but you know it's it is what it is it is a wonderful watch Fits great on the wrist, and I say I've got five of them. That's how much I like them, and I have seen a new dial, new bezel, new hands. So I might just have to purchase another uh, another new one, and have that modded as well. So anyway, that's my. SKX collection. Next we have the Seiko SNE 471P1. Now this one is solar powered. It is 100 meters water resistant. You've got loom on the hands and the 12 o'clock pip. You've got a screw down case back but you haven't got a screw down crown unfortunately it is hardlex crystal 44 millimeter case 11 millimeters thick which isn't too bad fits you know fits nice on the wrist you got a 22 mil strap on it 
but it is 51 mil lug to lug now this is quite a large watch let's just uh, show you what it's like pop it on this wrist come on get on that so I'm not tightening it up properly or anything but that is you know that's 44 mil and 51 mil lug to lug so it does you know on my wrist I okay yeah, I've got a little bit of extra play if I wanted it like but it is a big watch I tend not to go over 44 mil because they do look a little bit huge on the wrist which I have got two which are huge on the wrist which I'll show you in a bit but anyway this is my SNE 471P1 just uh, take this off do a quick uh, zoom shot for you Let's get that off there my torch batteries are running low but anyway that's that's the loom on it it would have been nice if they were all over the numbers as well or at least the 12 3 6 and 9 but never mind you can't have everything but I do you know I do like this watch this watch does get quite a lot of uh, wrist time you know it is uh, a brushed case brushed fixed bezel on it as well but you know this is a very nice watch so that is my Seiko SNE 471P1 now we have the Seiko SNE 487P1 and the last one was the SNE 471 so this is the 487P1 solar powered again you've got 100 meters water resistant on it oh, let me just give that a quick wipe nice sunburst black dial on it it is only hardlex crystal on it you know, for the price of these watches so, you know they should have you know at least sapphire crystal you know a lot of other people have got a sapphire crystal for a lot less money so you got the loom let's do a little loom shot right off I definitely need to put new batteries in this so as you can see loom on the hands and the little pips where the hour markers are so you've not got a screw down crown but you have got uh, uh, crown protectors on the side of this you have got a screw down case back fixed bezel with minute markers all the way around it is a 43 millimeter case it does actually look bigger but I think what it is I think it's because it's got a very thin bezel around it you've got 10.7 millimeters thick you've got a 20 mil strap and 50 mil lug to lug nice polished case a bit of crap on it so let's uh, show what it looks like on the wrist I'd say that was a lot bigger than 43 but it says 43 and I've measured it and it says 43 but that is the SNE 487-P1 nice solar power 
say 100 meters water resistance you date it at 3 o'clock you don't have to worry about changing the battery just make sure you keep it in the light now I think this has got if it's on full, full charged you got like 10 months battery life on it which isn't bad you know, what you've got to do, like I do, once a month if I've not wore it because I do a rotation with watches stick it in the uh, window and let the sun hit it for a full day and you've got a, basically a full charge again but anyway, that's the SNE 487-P1 next on the list we have the Seiko this is a um, Submariner style modded Batman you've got 150 meters water resistant I have had it what you say I have had it modded so you got the Batman bezel the white dial and I had the little shark hand little second hand on it just that little uh, little bit of extra what it needed okay probably might have been better in the uh, blue or the black but I, I just fancied it in the red just to set it off a little bit more you now you've got a screw down crown you got a screw down case back polished case brushed on the lugs on the top lugs it is I want to change the time because I've not set it properly so you've got I'll show you Loom on the hands, our markers, and on the bezel. I know people are saying that's a GMT bezel, but how often do you actually use a GMT watch? I've got GMT watches, I never use them, don't need to use them. But anyway, that is the Seiko uh, Subby, I call it. So you got the rotating bezel, the screw down cut around, the screw down case back, the date at the three o'clock as I said. You've got a 44mm case. You've got 13.75 mil thick. You got a 20mm strap on it. And 48mm lug to lug. Now let's pop this on the wrist. It does look quite small actually. Hi. Line it up to the middle. It's not too bad. I've still got quite a bit of uh, play on there. But anyway, that's uh, my beautiful little subby. So I'm going to do these three together, they are basically the same watch, all that's different is you've got different colour bezels, different colour dials, same case, same inners, okay straps are different as well but it is basically the same watch. So we're going to start off with this which is known as the King Samurai because it's got the waffle dial. As you can see, got the waffle dial on it. So this one is the SRPE 37-K1. So you've got a 4R35 movement in it because it is only got the date and not the day as well. You've got a 41 hour power reserve, 200 meters water resistant. You've got rotating bezel. You got loom on the hands and hour markers. Let's just do a little quick 
you see that is quite bright there. So like I say, loom on the Howland and an our markers, you got screw down crown, you got screw down case back, yes I know I've not took the protecting protective coater off it. Nice case on it, brushed and polished. However, that took some doing. So brushed lugs. Nice Seiko strap on it as well. Let's pop it on the wrist. This is uh, quite a chunky watch. This actually. I'll just pop it like that so you can see what it looks like on the wrist. So you can get a bit further away. So you've got a 43mm case on this. Then you've got 12.8mm thick. You've got a 22mm strap. So if like, you have got a little bit of extension there, but uh, lug to lug in the side is 22mm. And then you've got 50mm lug to lug. So it is quite a long watch for on the wrist. You know, you might just get away with it with a smaller wrist, but it is quite a large watch. Now, these two basically the same, except for these are the older versions. This isn't the King Samurai, this one is I think it's the SRPB49K1, or it's the SRPF03K1. So that's that's these ones exactly the same specs and everything as the King Samurai except for they don't have the waffle dial but they are still a very nice watch great for diving in you know, they're just a great all-rounder watch and they're not overly expensive Anyway, that's the Seiko Samurais. Next up is the Seiko Prospects SRPE 93K1, also known as the Turtle because of the shape of it. Now, many, many years ago, they donned the 6105 same style case called it the Captain Willard and as if you've seen in my previous videos I tell you about the crown being directly at the four o'clock and that is an original not before not after if you want the original it will cost you a fur packet but anyway this is like a representation of that style of watch I know it's not got the same hands and hour markers so I have got a Captain Willard um, representation but it's in the steel dive uh, watch group so anyway this is the SRP E 93k1 you got a 4R36 movement in it, 36 meaning it's got the day date, 35 just means the date. 200 meters water resistant, rotating bezel, screw down crown and screw down case back. You got loom on the hands and hour markers. So let's give this a little blast with the light. You always tell an original Seiko dial. Because of how bright that Lumi Bright is. And they do last an awful long time. So, anyway, you've got a 44mm case. You've got 13mm thick, 22mm strap, so that's in, in the lugs. And then you got a 48 mil lug to lug overall length, which 
isn't too bad for the size of this watch. It is actually a nice fit on the wrist and it actually feels comfortable on the wrist as well. But cracking dive watch as well. They are fairly expensive. Well, all depends what you call expensive. But to be honest, I wasn't really over keen on the shape of the case at one point in time, but it really did grow on me. And, you know, it is one of my favourite Seiko watches. So anyway, that's the SRPE93K1. So we have next the Seiko SRPC35K1. It's a 4R35 movement in it. Automatic movement, 200 meters water resistant. This is known as the baby turtle. I'd say it's more like um, a terrapin than the leatherback because it is a small watch. This is absolutely ideal for any size wrist, even small wrists. Anyway, it has a rotating bezel, you've got a screw down crown, you've got a screw down case back, you've got loom on the hands and hour markers, let's give this a nice blast and as you can see on the bezel pip as well at the 12 o'clock or the 60 marker you got a 42 mil case so you got a 42 mil case 13 millimeters thick 20 mil strap yeah I did put the uh, Seiko strap on it did have a different uh, I think I had you know, actually a metal strap on it, a metal bracelet. So I'll put this one on. So let's say 20 mil strap, you got 42 mil lug to lug. It is only a shallow watch. I'll show you on the wrist. Say so it is only a little little watch. To the thing there, I do have quite a lot of wrist left for it, but that is little mini turtle or terrapin. Fantastic little watch, good movement in it, and everything. So, anyway, that's the SRPC 35 K1. Now then, we have one of the big boys now. This is the Seiko Astron. It's called a Big Date. And as you can see, why it's called a Big Date. Because it has got a Big Date. So this is the SSE 149J1. Solar powered GPS. It's got the eight times 42 movement in it see that sunburst dial on it as well I think this is absolutely beautiful watch I know some people don't like it because of where the date is but I, I love this watch so you got loom on the hands and our markers let's give it a, give it a blast with the light yeah, this torch is definitely going down. As you can see, 
you know, need to put some new batteries in. But that's the uh, you know, I do like that. It might get a little bit. But anyway, that's one of the most advanced watches you can get. As I say, it works off GPS, so it's very accurate. So it doesn't matter where you are in the world, it'll set to that time. Fantastic watch. It is only 100 meters water resistant, but you do get sapphire crystal. You have got a screw down case back as well. It is a very large watch. So, this is 45.5mm. You got 13mm thick, 19mm strap, which looks a lot bigger than 19mm, uh, and 54.6mm lug to lug. So let's pop it on the wrist. If I can get it to. I can't get it to close. Uh. I need to put another thing in it but that is the size of that watch can't get it to close my wrist I think my wrist swollen up a bit Let's see if we can put it a bit further down Let's see if we can get it to I still can't get it to close Not breaking it but anyway, that's 45.5 millimeter case on my wrist. I'm gonna have to find some lugs for it. So, well, like I say, it's a huge watch, but it's also a beautiful watch. And next up, I'll be showing you another one. So this is the even bigger watch. This is the Seiko Astron SAST 003G. Solar powered, just like the last one. GPS. Beautiful dial on it as well. So you've got titanium case and strap. So it's is a very light watch for the size of the watch this is one of my favorite uh, watches out of my whole collection you say you got sapphire crystal 100 meters water resistance you've got ceramic bezel on it as well date at the three o'clock loom on the hands and hour markers give that a bit of a last as you can see no, it's not bad at all that it is very accurate as well as it works off GPS so you got a screw down case back they are a little bit um, once you get used to using it it's not too bad but to set it and everything else it is a little bit awkward because you have to unscrew the crown pull it out sets so you know this is to uh, I have to be outside to do this because it needs to be in daylight and uh, with the satellites uh, connecting up same as the other one but this one is, whereas that one was a 45.5, this is actually even bigger. This is 47mm case. So you've got a 47mm case, 
you've got 17 millimeters thick so it is a huge chunky watch on the wrist now if you've got less than a seven inch wrist I wouldn't recommend uh, getting one of these um, you got 23 millimeter strap 55 mil lug to lug I'll just pop that open just Let's see if I can get this one on the wrist yeah I can just about snap it shut but so that's 47 mil on my wrist but if you look at the size of it it is a huge chunky watch but I still love this watch even though it is huge it only just about fits on my wrist to be honest but anything you know anything smaller than seven inch wrist I wouldn't I wouldn't take it on unless you want it overhanging but I do love this watch it was uh, rather expensive as well it's just on two thousand pound but it's like I say it's one of my favorite watches out of my collection so anyway that's the Seiko Astron SAST 003G next on this list we have the Seiko Alpinist this is the SPB 117J1 it has a automatic movement it is the 6R35 movement with an impressive 70 hour power reserve on it beautiful looking watch you've got a rotating in the bezel very nice you got screw down crown nice action screw that in you got a screw down exhibition case back to show that 6R35 movement and a nice impressive 70 hour power reserve that's really good that we've got sapphire crystal with the uh, cyclops there showing the date at the three o'clock see automatic 200 meters water resistance as well very good we've got 39.9 millimeter case 13 millimeters thick 20 mil strap and 46.5 lug to lug so it isn't a massive watch it's only as big as the air uh, what's his name that little mini turtle but it is a beautiful looking watch so anyway that is the Seiko Alpinist SPB, come on, get in focus. 117-J1. So, next up, we have my modded 7002. Now, this is an old watch that's been modified paddy dial on it Seiko Prospects paddy dial it is it says on there 200 meters water resistant that's been pressure tested to 150 but this is a nice modified watch lines up nicely so I say this is an old what new watch just needs a bit of a wipe because I've been wearing it quite a bit 
lovely uh, looking watch. It does look like the SKX007, but it is slightly smaller. As the 007, you've got the screw down crown, screw down case back, rotating bezel it is on the Jubilee style bracelet. I've left it on this bracelet because I thought it looked uh, quite decent on it actually. Especially with that dial. So you got this uh, date at the 3 o'clock. There's no day on this as it is the older model. This was actually out before the SKX 007s and 401s and the 399s and all that lot so this was the predecessor I have had it modded as you can see so you got the coke bezel on it the hands beautiful dial so dimensions 42 mil 13 millimeters thick You've got 21 and a half mil strap. Now that's a very awkward strap to get hold of. And then you've got 45 mil lug to lug on it. Well, this watch. Looks fantastic on the wrist. Snap it shut. I don't know what's happened with my wrist today, but it seems to be a bit bigger. That's what it looks like on the wrist. Very nice. Go diving in it and everything. But really nice looking watch. So that is your Seiko. 7002 uh, say on the back as well but you know just a press clasp on it you know, not solid end links but it still does the job it still looks good looks nice I'm very happy with it so, if you're still watching, thanks for bearing with me. I know it's probably a long video. I've not even started to edit it, edit it yet. So I don't know how long this is going to take. But thanks for sticking with the video. And there's only two more watches to do anyway. If I find the other one, I'm not even going to bother putting it in. I'll just have to put it into me state of the collection I'm not sure where to put it got an idea but I'm not messing about just going to try and find it so anyway that's my Seiko 7002 so almost at the end we have the Seiko SPB 147 this is the 62 mass homage it's the gilded style the gold hands and our markers it's a beautiful looking watch this you've got a 6R35 automatic movement 70 hour power reserve it's 200 meters water resistant you've got sapphire crystal which should in this blooming price range because it's like 900 pound watch you got a rotating bezel screw down crown you got a screw down case back you got loom on the hands hour markers and the bezel let's give that give it a little you 
as you can see how bright that is really good we've got a 40.5 millimeter case you got 13.2 millimeters thick you got 20 mil strap 47.6 lug to lug this watch does work very nicely pop it on the wrist like that for a minute as you can see that looks good on the wrist great for diving in great for going out in a good all round watch this shouldn't get any uh, snobbery from this really do like this watch but that is the Seiko SPB 147 62 mass a close up it is a pro specs one well here we have it the last one and what you thinking god I'm glad that's over with it has been a long uh, video so this one is the SKA 765-P1 it has the kinetic movement so yeah to be honest I've not really uh, wound this up for a long time I think I actually do need a, a new uh, capacitor in it as it is doesn't seem to uh, last very long it does need a really good wind up As you can see, it's not charged up at all. But anyway, this is a kinetic movement. It is 100 meters water resistant, titanium case and strap. So it is very light. You got your date at the three o'clock. You got your loom. Let's give this a quick loom shot. It has got some loom on it, which isn't too bad, as you can see. You got your loom there. You got a. Like I say you got the exhibition display back on it. Screw down case. It's not a screw down crown. You've got a forty one millimeter case. That's measured from there to there. So it's 41 mil you got 11 millimeters thick so you got integrated strap which is gone from 21 mil down to 18 mil and you've got 48 mil lug to lug let's just put this on the wrist of it do it properly after but, so that it looks like on the wrist but it is titanium so it does look a bit grey in colour obviously the dial's grey to match the watch and then you've got the gold accents on the hands and the hour markers so that is my SKA 765-P1 I say it is a nice looking watch I have got 100 meters water resistant decided to uh, move then you do have to wear this you know for it to work the uh, counterweight to move around as I said, I've not worn this for a good while. It does need a really good charge. 
I'll have to put it on um, my uh, watch winder. See if we can get it going properly again. But well, anyway, that's my Seiko SK-8765P1. So, basically that is all. Well, I'm sure I've got one missing somewhere. Positive I've got a, uh, one missing somewhere. But like I said, this is my Seiko collection. It'll give you a good idea of what type of watch you would like. They say there is a fair amount of different styles of watches. You know, you've got your divers, your dress watches, your field watches. You know, you're just like oh, outrageous and crazy. It costs a lot of money. You know, but there's a good selection there. Like I say, I'm I'm not just into just one style of watch. I'm not just into divers watches. I do like all different styles of watches. Um, like I say I do have like watches from like World War One, World War Two, stuff like that. I don't really show them because um, I don't think very many people are actually interested in them. Well, anyway, that's my Seiko collection. I hope you've liked the video. I hope you've stuck to the end. It has been a long one. And my State of the Collection Part 4 is going to be a long video as well. Because there is quite a few. I might just cut it down to about 20 watches. And then do another 20 in like a part five or something like that but anyway my Seiko collection I might do my citizen collection I don't know not as quite as many or do the solar powered watches that I've got I have got quite a lot of them you probably would uh, like them as well but anyway keep watching hit that subscribe button if you want to watch some more videos, hit that bell for the latest videos out, and I'll see you all soon.